Hi, it's Harlan Krumholtz. I'm editor-in-chief at Jack, and we have a terrific article led by Ben Sirica on the effects of semaglutide on COVID outcomes, on non-cardiac, non-cardiovascular outcomes from the SELECT trial. Ben, what is this? I mean, what did you do exactly? So thanks so much, Harlan, and thanks to Jack for, uh, for publishing this paper. What we did is uh, looked in the SELECT trial. Um, so SELECT was 17,600 patients. Uh, it started before COVID, and then during COVID, we quickly realized as a trial, we first had to make sure that the study went on, and we did a great job on that. But secondly, we realized it was a unique opportunity to collect data. And so we added uh, data capture forms, we adjudicated COVID-related deaths, and we tried to collect as much data, understand first sort of what's the effect of COVID um, in a high-risk cardiovascular population. And then we looked and wanted to see what was the interaction with treatment with semaglutide 2.4 milligrams versus placebo. And, and so, first of all, it's really interesting because your first move was to say, we got this cohort. Let's just understand the pandemic. And by the way, kudos to you because I think every single trial would have benefited from helping to shine some light on the pandemic by taking advantage of the infrastructure they'd already set up. But then you took that next step and said, you know, how does a drug affect this? Because it's promoting health, pardon metabolic health, treating obesity, and let's see what it does with COVID-related outcomes. What did you find? So we found that overall about a quarter of the population reported a COVID event, um, and that was equal in both arms. So it doesn't look like semaglutide affected uh, getting COVID. But we found that in patients who develop COVID, patients treated with semaglutide had lower rates of serious COVID-related events, so serious adverse events that were related to COVID. And we found that fewer patients treated with semaglutide actually ended up dying from COVID. And this was within a larger observation that we just saw fewer non-cardiovascular deaths with semaglutide compared to placebo. Um, and a significant, about a 29% reduction in non-cardiovascular death. And that was surprising for a bunch of reasons. I mean, first, you know, in cardiovascular outcome trials, we're used to thinking that we have to just adjudicate for cardiovascular death or therapy won't have any effect on non-cardiovascular death. But I do think in cardiometabolic disease, when we're thinking of diseases where there are potential multiple mechanisms, we do have to have a more open mind to think about what could be different, different pathways. I mean, this is amazing. I mean, we don't have another drug that people can take that makes them safer in the midst of a pandemic like COVID-19. I and mean, we can treat it acutely, but but with regard to actually promoting people's health, putting them in a stronger position so that they can survive and, and even thrive in the midst of the pandemic. I mean, were you surprised by the result? I, I was surprised for a couple of reasons. First, you know, we don't know why this is. And 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 it comes up with a lot of the debates with, you know, with the potent incretin therapies. Is it the weight or is it, you know, other pleiotropic cardiometabolic benefits? And John Deanfield has a paper that looks and an abstract that looks at uh, weight. And it in select at least, it doesn't look like weight was a major mediator in the benefit in, on MACE. Um, when we looked in the COVID populations, we saw similar rates of weight loss, whether people did or didn't die of COVID. So I don't think it was directly related to that. Uh, though you can think that maybe people who on general lost a little bit more weight were more resistant to the respiratory failure and, and some of the other comorbidities. There is other data. I mean, GLP-1 receptors are all over the body um, and do affect immunologic status and, and does uh, sort of significant modulation of that pathway improve inflammation and 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 enhance the immune um uh, the immune status is is definitely a hypothesis and I think the some of the observations we see in this analysis and hopefully things that'll come out in the future will be able to test that further yeah I mean I think it's really interesting I, I begin to think about the weight loss almost as a side effect I mean these are really promoting health. I was thinking mostly about cardiometabolic health, but then when your paper comes out and, and some of the others I'm seeing, I'm, I'm thinking there may be many mechanisms by which it's making us healthier. And in some ways, this is suggesting it's helping us to resist 
the adverse consequences of, of the pandemic. I mean, I think it's a really important paper and, uh, you know, there's so much to build on it. So final thing. So what's the headline from this paper? People walk away. What's the one thing that they should remember about what you found? I think that that semaglutide 2.4 milligrams reduces not only cardiovascular death, but also non-cardiovascular death. And I think that opens up a real new avenue to try to optimize, you know, overall well-being in patients with, with advanced cardiometabolic disease. And so this is about people with obesity and cardiovascular disease. Uh, it's another good reason why we should be treating obesity. But one last thing, do you think this will be something we should be trying in people who, who don't have obesity? I think we should. I mean, I think, again, we 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 put these different definitions about when somebody has overweight or obesity. It's all a spectrum. And even within the spectrum of weight, there probably are a lot of heterogeneity. Um, and I think we need to understand that heterogeneity better and being able to modify uh, a lot of the cardiometabolic disarray with the potent incretin therapies. Um, should start as early as possible. We're only picking out the people. High-risk people, right? High-risk people, yeah, yeah. Yeah, great. Hey, it's super to have you on. Congratulations to you and the team for a terrific article. We're proud to publish it, Jack, and uh, we look forward to more good stuff from you guys. Great, thanks so much. Thank you.